Hi everybody, I am that nursing prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be learning about abdominal aortic aneurysms. So let's get into it. Now you might have heard of this called a AAA before, or if you've heard that and you're like, what does that mean? That's what they're talking about, okay? So a AAA is an abdominal aortic aneurysm. An aneurysm is a dilation and weakening of a blood vessel. And then your aorta, of course, is the largest blood vessel in your body. So you can imagine if that becomes damaged or weak, that has mass effects on your whole body. Who is at risk for developing this? The number one biggest risk factor of all time is being a cigarette smoker. So smokers have the highest risk out of anybody for developing a AAA. Other risk factors include things like being advanced age, so over 65, and that has to do with the natural changes that occur with aging, the loss of elasticity in your blood vessels, being male, having a history of heart disease or stroke, having high cholesterol or hypertension, which is high blood pressure. And oftentimes, people will have many of these risk factors together. Some common causes include things like, we just talked about, hypertension, infection, trauma to the chest, so maybe something like a car accident could have caused this. And then another thing called atherosclerosis, which is the hardening of the arteries. When it comes to signs and symptoms, some people don't really have signs and symptoms because the enlargement goes very slowly and then bursts or rupture doesn't occur. So a couple of things they might have though. So prior to it bursting, they might complain of things like deep, constant pain in the abdomen, back pain, they might have a lower blood pressure, and they might feel a pulsation near their belly button, so near their umbilicus. After it bursts, after it ruptures, the patient might complain of dizziness, fainting, uh, tachycardia, shortness of breath. They might appear sweaty, pale, and clammy. And then they might report an intense pain that they describe as like a, a burning or a tearing sensation. A burst aneurysm is a medical emergency. People can live with an aneurysm and have some of these symptoms, but once it ruptures, now this is a medical emergency and requires rapid treatment. Prior to rupture, how would we know about this, right? How would we diagnose somebody having this if it's not become an emergency yet? Well, we're going to do some screening. So what they're going to do is an abdominal ultrasound. This is the most common thing they're going to do to see if you have an aneurysm. They may also, in addition to that, do a CT scan because the CT scan is going to tell us the size and the shape of it. So how bad is it? Screening recommendations. These vary depending on where you're at, but in general, they recommend people who are at higher risk, so men who smoke and are over the age of 65, to get screened for it. Even if they don't have anything else going on, those risk factors are significant enough that they get at least one screening. If you do have it, if you do get diagnosed with a AAA, it depends on the size. So if you have a small AAA, they recommend getting checked out every single year. So an annual screening to make sure it hasn't gotten too big. If you have a medium-sized AAA, they want you to get screened every three months, just to keep an eye on it to make sure it doesn't get too big. When it comes to nursing interventions for this, it kind of depends because some people have a, like a really small one, some people have a very large one, some people have a burst one, right? So there's going to be a variety of interventions depending on what's going on with your patient. So big stuff anybody can do, education, right? They all need to be educated on living a healthier lifestyle. So having a healthier diet, decreasing on fatty foods, decreasing greasy foods, salty foods, right? Encouraging exercise, regular physical activity. Stop smoking. We've talked about this throughout this whole video, right? That's the number one risk factor. So get them to stop smoking. We want to educate them on the importance of getting regular checkups 
And if they are part of that group that has already been diagnosed, they need to get those regular scans. Surgery is the treatment of choice for this. So you're going to have to do nursing interventions related to pre, intra, and post-op care. This can include things like giving IV fluids, inserting a Foley catheter, and giving antibiotics. I put informed consent on here. Remember, it is the surgeon's responsibility to get informed consent, right? But we as the nurse need to know that they have it, right? We need to know that they've signed consent for surgery. We want to monitor their respiratory status, their circulatory status, and your, their vital signs. We want to teach them about stress management, right? Because putting extra stress on their body increases their blood pressure and can make it burst. And we want to teach them to avoid heavy lifting because any strenuous physical activity, you know, exercise is good, right? Healthy exercise, not strenuous exercise. Strenuous exercise and heavy lifting can also cause an issue. And I wanted to make sure I was very clear about this. This is a really big deal. This is a very dangerous thing to have. A burst aneurysm needs emergency surgery. This is an emergency. Speaking from personal experience, I have done CPR probably on more AAA patients than I have on any other type of patient. Okay, So this can go south really quickly when it bursts. So a burst is a medical emergency that requires emergency surgery. So it's very, very important that we are carefully monitoring these patients. We're doing lots of education to prevent these things from happening in the first place. So that was my video on AAA, Abdominal Aortic Aneurysm. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.